any profit maximizing firm will continue to produce output so long as the additional revenue from producing, the marginal revenue, is greater than the additional cost the firm incurs by producing more, the marginal cost. So a profit maximizing firm is going to stop producing when marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. For a price taking firm, for instance, the second step of two-step profit maximization told us that the firm is going to stop producing where price is equal to marginal cost. That's a simple application of the rule that marginal revenue has to be equal to marginal cost. Because for a price taking perfectly competitive firm, marginal revenue is equal to price. Each additional unit produced can be sold at the market price. We're not going to turn to profit maximization for a monopolist. A monopolist who faces a downward sloping market demand curve from which we can derive the marginal revenue curve. When the demand curve is linear, the marginal revenue curve has the same intercept and twice the slope. Now the monopolist is going to do profit maximization in the same two steps as what we did for the price taking firm. In the first step, the monopolist is going to calculate how much it's going to cost to produce different units of output. And that's going to allow the monopolist to derive the marginal cost curve. Now the good news is that deriving cost curves for monopolists is exactly the same as deriving cost curves for perfectly competitive firms, as long as those firms are price takers in the input markets, the markets for labor and capital. That's because when we figure out how much it's going to cost to produce, the price that's going to be set has nothing to do with that. That comes in the second step of two-step profit maximization. When we figure out the cost curves, we're just trying to figure out what are the best bundles of labor and capital to use to produce different levels of output and what are they going to cost. So that process is exactly the same for firms with market power as it is for firms without market power, as long as those firms don't have market power in the input markets of labor and capital. So we already know how to derive those cost curves from the underlying production functions. It's in the second step that things are different for the monopolist. Once we have the cost curves and we can derive the marginal cost curve, we now have to set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, which isn't equal to some predetermined price in the market. So what's missing in the picture then is our marginal cost curve, the result of that first step of two-step profit maximization. And since we know what those cost curves look like, we can just put in a cost, marginal cost curve that looks like the marginal cost curves we've been using. So here we have our marginal cost. And this could be a short run or a long run marginal cost, but let's think of it as a long run marginal cost curve. Now we can apply the rule that we use in the second step of two-step profit maximization. Marginal revenue has to be equal to marginal cost at the output level that we choose. Well, that happens where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. So the monopolist is going to produce this quantity, the monopoly quantity, and then sell that quantity at the price that the demand curve tells us we can sell it at. So this will be the monopoly price. So this simple picture is then the picture of the second step of two-step profit maximization for a monopolist. Set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, produce that quantity, and price accordingly. We can also see in that picture where the profit for the monopolist lies if there are no fixed costs. There's nothing in the picture that tells us anything about fixed costs because marginal costs don't contain fixed costs. But if there are no fixed costs, then the marginal cost curve tells us all of our costs. So to figure out the total cost, we would just take the area underneath the marginal cost curve. The cost of the first unit, the additional cost of the second unit, the third unit, and so forth. When we subtract that area from our total revenue box, we get this area in here. So that becomes the monopolist's profit if fixed costs are zero. Now, if there are fixed costs, we'd have to subtract those from that area to come up with the firm's profit. Or we could go to the average cost curve that does include fixed costs. If we did that, we'd have our demand curve. 
this picture tells us the monopolist is going to produce this quantity. So that's the monopoly quantity and the monopoly price. So we're just not replicating the marginal revenue and marginal cost curves, but they're intersecting at this quantity. And now we can put in our average cost curve. Now, if our average cost curve crosses the demand curve, so it looks something like this, then the average cost of producing this monopoly quantity will lie below the price the monopolist can charge. And now we can see the total cost, including the fixed cost, just the average cost times output, because the average cost curve contains fixed costs. And as long as that average cost curve crosses the demand curve, the average cost of producing the profit maximizing quantity will lie below the price. So average cost times output gives us total costs. Price times output gives us total revenue. So now we would get the profit, including accounting for fixed costs, in here. The only way the monopolist cannot make a profit is if the fixed costs are so high that the average cost curve lies above the demand curve. If the average cost curve lies above here, then at the quantity that occurs where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue, the average cost would lie above the price. So the total revenue box would be smaller than the total cost box, and the firm would be losing money, would be making a negative profit by producing where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. But as long as fixed costs aren't so high that the average cost lies above the demand curve, the rule that the firm should produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost will give us the profit maximizing quantity to produce, and then we can simply read the price off of the demand curve.